In the previous video we looked at the effects of shear on a block of material. Now the key distinction there was that the shear forces were offset by a distance. There was a distance between the line of action of the two forces. Now what we're looking at this time is the difference between single and double shear, but one of the key things that we notice here is that the distance between the line of action of the two forces is negligible. If we begin by looking at single shear, the diagram at the top, then the object that's being sheared is the red pin in the center. And for the purpose of this example, we're going to assume that that pin is circular and it has an area as shown there. Now, as the forces are applied to the two ends of those tie bars, that pin there is going to be placed under shear. And we can calculate the shear stress acting on that material because shear stress is force divided by area. And in this case, the shear plane is the cross-sectional area of the pin as the pin is being subjected to shear in this region here. So we have the cross-sectional area of the pin A, we have the force F, therefore we can calculate the shear stress. But because at the point where that shearing action is taking place, the two forces are not offset at a given distance, or if they are, that distance is negligible. So we're in a position where it would be very difficult for us to calculate the shear strain on that piece of material. What we'd really be looking at is whether the shear stress would be large enough in order to cause that pin to fail due to shear. The diagram at the bottom is a similar scenario, except this time what we end up with is we end up with two shear surfaces. There's a surface here which is shearing, and there's a surface here which is shearing. We still have a circular pin, and that circular pin still has a cross-sectional area A, but this time the area that's resisting the shear force is double. We have an area here resisting the shear force, but we also have the same area here resisting the shear force. So for that pin, which is being placed in double shear, we would have a stress equal to the force divided by two times the area of the pin. The shearing area is doubled. If we refer back to our first diagram now, and if we want to increase the resistance to the shear force, then what we could do is we could add a second pin between the two tie bars. And I'm going to add a second pin here between those two tie bars. Now I've deliberately drawn that with a different area, a larger cross-sectional area, and the cross-sectional area there I'm going to call A2. Now by doing that, I've increased the area that's resisting the shear. I've increased the area of the shear plane. Now I have this area here, as well as the area that we had originally. So the stress now on that piece of material would still be the force, but the area is increased. The area is now A plus A2. The shearing area is increased. The important thing with this is both of those pins are going to be experiencing exactly the same stress. So if we calculate the stress using the equation there, tor equals F over the compound area, then each of those pins are going to experience that stress. So tor is going to equal the stress in pin 1, which is also going to equal the stress in pin 2. The stress is consistent across both of the loaded components. And the same is true for double shear. The stress on this surface here is going to be the same as the stress on this surface here. And the value of that stress will be determined by F over 2A.